Hooked in the eye. Hooked in the eye. I don't know. <laughs> Scary. Come here. Come here. Come here. <laughs> Half inch stud <laughs> walleye. Look at that girl. That is a beautiful video fish that I was waiting for. <laughs> <laughs> Load the boat, but we still got some. Like, oh my goodness. Oh, there we go. Right at the last minute. Yes. Oh my god! I think that's the biggest one I've ever seen. No, give me a to pull in this beast. That is beautiful. <laughs> What is up, Fisher people? I'm gonna do a video here that I kinda of wanted to do for a while, but for a while I was a little self-conscious about whether or not I was even like qualified to do this video, right? This is about how to make a great fishing video, if any of them are great, uh, and specifically on a budget because I, I make videos on a budget, honestly. I was not a videographer to start with. I was a fishing guy to start with and a fishing guide, you know, which they always say, if you take a passion career, you don't make a crap ton of money. Um, so basically I started with, you know, I got one GoPro and I'll show you that later and a camera phone. And that's how I do a lot of stuff. So for somebody that wants to know kind of how to get started and make videos without putting out a ton of money, this is how I do it. And maybe I'm still not exactly an expert, but I have put out over a hundred videos now. So, you know, I got some experience. So some of this video is going to be a little bit of technical stuff about what I actually do in my process. And some of it's going to be more creative thought driven in terms of like how I envision a video coming together and that kind of stuff. So the first thing I should note is that there's kind of a couple of different kinds of videos that one can make. I mean, there's this sort of like, I'm gonna go fishing today and just record everything that happens and that's my fishing day and it's a fishing video, right? And those things definitely kind of come out a little bit random, but I'm trying to think through some of those things and I've gotten better over time at trying to think some of how that's gonna to come together, right? So I don't necessarily go out at the start of the day and say, okay, today I'm gonna catch hog walleyes, deep fish and jigging wraps because Sometimes you show up and the fish just don't do what you think they're gonna do, right? So I typically go out, start fishing, get some stuff on camera, and sometimes I'll actually then like record an intro after the fact that I put at the beginning of the video. Yeah, magic, right? And uh, sometimes I just kind of like let it go where it goes and then I'll like talk in the middle of the video about here's how this is starting to come together. So like there are ways in the editing process later to kind of make it come together and make it look like there was a script and a plan, but it doesn't always happen that way, obviously. And sometimes I'll get in the middle and like a, a video just feels like, uh, it's just kind of taking on a life of its own. I feel like it doesn't need to be a certain thing. It's just kind of cool the way it's going and that's great and I just let it happen. Um, then there's other videos where it's like, you know, how to video, like how to tie a spin rig, how to tie a uni knot how to make a sakakawi a crunch wrap, how to cook walleyes, that kind of stuff. And some of them might happen spontaneously like the crunch wrap one did, but there's obviously kind of like a structure and an order. And for a lot of them, like a lot of these like talking head videos are actually like put together a bit of a bullet pointed item list of what I want to spit out there at some point during the video. So sometimes the type of video kind of determines what I'm gonna do, but I always try to have like a vision and it also makes things easier to come together in the editing process later like as things are going to go okay I'm noticing that I'm fishing a lot of bluff shorelines that are wind blown and stuff like that so as I'm doing that I'll you know grab some b-roll of some bluff shorelines to kind of splice in there or if it's a really rough day I'll make sure I get some b-roll of the trolling motor 
bouncing up and down in the water and the bow rocking around and if I can safely, I'll try to get some footage as I'm driving in the boat and the boat's crashing waves and stuff like that, you know? So like, I'm thinking about things and how I can pull that together um, because that's the one thing I've learned a lot lately that has really enhanced the videos and I've noticed that because people have said things about it is the B-roll, not just the fishing action, but what are the other little things that you can get shots of along the way? Because that really enhances it and helps make it more cinematic, makes it more of a story, and it just, sometimes it gets boring just seeing that one camera shot of just me talking or just me fishing. So you need to do something a little different so that you don't have to freaking look at me anymore because that can get old. So along those lines, in terms of how I'm doing those things, like the one thing that I always have is I always have my GoPro sitting in my Yolo Tech power stick, and that goes right in the back of the boat or the front of the boat in the nav light post. So that's invaluable because A, it's just a great way to hold your camera, but B, you can also charge it through your nav light port so that your camera is always charging throughout the day and you don't run out of battery, which is great. So that's kind of the, the main camera, the action camera, if you will. And literally everything else that I do outside of that GoPro, I do on my phone and the iPhone has a 12 mini, yeah, whatever the mini is, that's the phone I got. It has great, great camera quality. And honestly, I think it's better than my GoPro, the newer GoPros that might not be so much. This is a Hero 5 Black that I got, but it's super, super good. And anytime that I want to get something on B-roll, I just whip out my camera, record whatever I want to record, and off we go. And honestly, if I'm not like fishing in the boat, and if I'm fishing on the ice, for example, there's there's plenty of videos that I've done 100% completely with nothing but my phone. That early ice slaughter fest that we had at uh, the Webster Lake area, the Glacier Lakes area, that video was 100% on this phone that I'm filming on right now. That's the Kakawea Crunch Rat video was 100% on the phone. There's some of the better videos that I've done. That last video that I did in Florida, fishing in Cape Coral, that was 100% on this phone. So you can put together some really great videos with just a phone, especially if you start adding a lot of that B-roll shot stuff in there and you know, do you wanna be able to try to stabilize the camera a little bit. Sometimes it's need to get that sort of like shaky camera documentary thing, but I also try to make it as stable as I can for situations so that the whole video doesn't look so shaky because that can get kind of old too. So if you think you need all this fancy equipment to, to make a great or even a good fishing video, it's just its just not true. You can do really good videos on your phone if that's all you have, especially. You know, I think at some point I would like to upgrade and get some new cameras. Uh, that's a thing that I will do if I can get some more money. So along those lines, what would really help me out if you wanna to try to support this channel is subscribe, like, share, do all that kind of stuff. If I can reach a thousand subscribers and get to monetization, that'd be a big deal for me to upgrade some things and level up a little bit. Or you could also go on to Patreon. I got some tiers on there if you wanna just support the channel, support me as a creator. Um, if I can get some of those things going and have enough money to eat food <laughs> and that sort of stuff and pay for this house and all of those things, uh, then I can make some some uh, investments and in, in more camera gear and that kind of stuff at some point. But for now, GoPro, iPhone, that's all I got. Oh. But I also got the microphone, so I got this the Ceramonic Blink Pro, what do they call these? The Blink 500 Pro, I got that. So that was another big thing that like, because when you're filming out on Lake Sakakawea especially, and you got a lot of wind, the audio just gets terrible. So that was one upgrade I made two years ago, was to get microphones for my GoPro so that you can hear a little better. That was a huge deal. You don't have to worry about that in your house so much and stuff that you're shooting on an iPhone indoors, but audio is a freaking big deal. So if there's one thing that you kind of have to upgrade pretty early if you want to make a decent fishing video, make sure you got good, clean audio. And if that means getting an external mic for your GoPro, so be it. Oh, the other thing you're also going to need, there's these GoPro external mic adapters. So if you do get an external mic, you need one of those to even make the thing work because GoPro doesn't automatically work with it. And there, I don't think there's another adapter that works for it. So you have to go through GoPro, unfortunately, that's the way it is. 
but a GoPro and an iPhone is a great start. External mics if you're filming in the wind to make sure the audio quality is good. And then that becomes the creative part, just filming good content, filming neat things, and thinking about the story of how you put it together. So then in terms of like the editing software that I use, I have Mac stuff. I got Apple Mac stuff because I got the iPhone. It just makes it easier to integrate and sync things. And I've been using a, a Mac laptop for a long time. And that happens to come with iMovie for free. I've been thinking about upgrading to Final Cut Pro. Haven't pulled that trigger yet. Everything I've done to this point has been on iMovie. It's not a terrible program. Um, so maybe I'll just, I'll, you know what? I'll pop open a project on iMovie and kind of show you how that works a little bit. Oh, along the way, let's just, uh, yeah, let's just take a gander here through the, yeah, see, this is my, my lovely filming studio, right? It's my office in my house. Um, see, I even got lighting. That's another thing you can think about. Lighting makes stuff look really pretty. <laughs> Although you gotta be careful with shadows and whatnot. So like lighting is a free thing to think about. Well, it's free in terms of whether or not you have like, e lamps and stuff. Lamps are pretty cheap. Most people have lamps to begin with, so no additional cost. Maybe that's a better term, right? You got tons of sticky notes. I'm kind of a sticky note freak. That's another thing about me. Um, in terms of all the, the scripting and whatnot, can I put this on the table? That's so tall. Let me get it down once. That's still kind of tall, but we're gonna make do with that. So uh, I got my lovely laptop out here. Ooh. There's a video right there. So if you're an actual video editor, this may not be that interesting, or maybe it will be, but it's not gonna be like super high level stuff. But if you've never like seen one of these things before, this is like, so you, you import media into a timeline, and then you just like edit stuff, like clip, clip, I gotta go backwards, there we go, clip. And then the green stuff down here is audio, and you can kind of see how this stuff just like pieces together. This is that Kate Coral video that I did, by the way. And uh, then you can like obviously preview it. But this is an exciting development, so let's go check it out. So yeah, it kind of works like that. Um, so you import clips from the GoPro, you import clips from this phone, piece it all together, and then that's where all that magic happens. That's where you can start to like, you know, because when you're out there filming, sometimes you, do, you have an idea of what's gonna come together and sometimes you don't. So you just kind of like film stuff and see if it makes sense. And then when you get it in this program, you might find ways to go, oh, that would be a cool little thing to insert here or insert here. And, that's the stuff that takes a lot longer to figure out. Like you can always just like film a bunch of clips, dump it in there and maybe just cut the ends where you're like pushing the button to shut the phone off. Um, but the art form really comes in like piecing that all together in a creative way. And the other very, another thing to think about, like a, along with the audio, the microphone, the other thing that makes a video really come together is again, audio, but in terms of music, like, I was just playing that intro clip of this Florida video with a little bit of background music and you'd be surprised how many things seem boring until all of a sudden you put the right song to it and you go, oh, that's kind of entertaining. <laughs> like, So music is something important to think about and I went a long time with free music, anything I could get free and just trying to mess around with that. There's some music in iMovie, which isn't all that great, but there are places you can get some music. I happen to go with, I did a lot of research and looked at a lot of stuff and thought and thought and thought. And I finally went with Epidemic Sound. I got a subscription from them and they have tons of really good music. That's, I, you probably noticed kind of a music shift in my videos towards the end of the fall. That's when I got that subscription. So all the music has been a lot different and it's just so much better quality, so much more unique, so many more options that I think have really kind of leveled up some of the videos, not only for me, but other people. So music is a huge, huge deal. And I got, you know, just a bunch of like, I browse. So like you can browse all their music tracks here and it's linked up to my account. And then they eventually kind of figure out like what kind of stuff you dig and they give you recommendations. That's not bad for, I don't know. 
some kind of chill thing, but then you can pull it all into iMovie. So I just got a bunch of sounds that I've loaded in here and there's probably better ways of organizing this, but you know. And then once you have it all like loaded in here, you can start throwing it down, dragging it down onto your timeline and, and matching it up. And, and one of the things that obviously some people may notice that some, for some people it may be a little more subtle is, you know, timing things to music, timing scene changes, timing, you know, hook sets to like intense parts of the music. And that's where you can do all this cool stuff with the editing and that I've gotten really into a lot lately. And, oh, look here. I've also like made stuff for my, uh, I got, I got stuff for my author channel here. I don't know if I, I, I decided to split that up. So I used to do like some of my book videos on this channel. And then I noticed like some people didn't really like those videos and not only did they not like them, but they started like unsubscribing to my main channel cause they're like, oh, this guy's making book videos now or whatever. And so, which to me is like, I don't know, just don't watch that video, but whatever. So if <laughs> I don't want those videos on this channel, I decided to split that out. So if you'd like to see more book videos, you should go to my author channel. It's just my name on YouTube, Brett Blumendahl. Uh, trying to get that rolling a little bit as a separate thing. So like and subscribe to that stuff too, please. But yeah, like I said, that's where most of the magic happens is in the editing software after the fact. But one thing that I've tried to get better at over time, and I may have mentioned this earlier, is trying like knowing what things, like after a video has started for a while, especially if it's a spontaneous video, if it's a fishing day video, you start to get a feel for what things, where it's going, what's kind of going to be the title or the theme of that, of that story. Like for example, if it winds up like you fish for three, four hours and it's a super tough day, tough weather, it's a real grinder of a day, then you gotta think, okay, I'm probably not gonna catch all that many fish. The fish are gonna be like super climactic moments. I need to put in a lot of other stuff to even make a video out of this. So a lot of video of me just like jigging and not catching fish and video of me like driving to new spots, like stuff to like fill those gaps to kind of tell that story of like, hey, this is a really tough long day as opposed to like, skipping over the three hours that nothing happened entirely and then just showing the next fish catch, right? You got to think about like, what, how is that day developing? What, what is going to be the story and how am I going to tell it? And just remembering like to turn the camera on once in a while. I got, at one point I wasn't very good at that. And I literally just turned it on when action happened, when a fish catch happened. And I, I started teaching myself like every once in a while, just turn it on and just say what, is coming to mind. Like, what are you doing right now? What are you, what's happening? What are you struggling with? What are you trying to figure out? Because, you know, fishing isn't always just about catching fish. Sometimes fishing is about the struggle and figuring out how to catch fish or why you're not catching fish. So I want to let people in on that process too, when I'm frustrated. So I turn on the camera and I start talking to the camera about what's not coming together. The other great things that you can do at some point, even if you're having a really good day at some point, I in this, I really gotta get better at this, is like talking about your gear, your process, your program, the pattern, what you figured out, you know? To say, all right, I started to figure out that I'm finding fish in 20 feet of water, I'm catching them on, let's call it a jigging route. And start talking about the, the cadence that you're using, the gear that you're using, the line, the lures, all that kind of stuff. Cause I've learned that people like to know more about that stuff and I gotta get better at that and I'll continue to get better at that. But yeah, it's kind of, it's a delicate balance between like letting the fishing day evolve organically, but also seeing what that pattern is and then kind of on the fly writing a script, if that makes sense. So as you can see, like some of the stuff is kind of challenging, but I enjoy that challenge of figuring that out and making that come together and hopefully you enjoy watching the end product that's the whole point of this obviously and it's starting to get to the point where more of you have enjoyed watching and i really appreciate that and if you haven't already subscribed liked and that kind of stuff or you know other people that might be interested in that just know that that directly relates to my ability to have success on this platform and to support me and help me continue doing what I'm doing. So give that some thought and I would really appreciate it and be super grateful if you were able to help out in that regard. Subscriptions, Patreon if you have it in you. And uh, yeah, hopefully we can keep this going. Hopefully I can keep doing this 
a lot more and hopefully you continue to enjoy it. I've enjoyed it. I want to keep enjoying it. I think, is that all? I think that's all. Later, Fisher people. Thank mm -hmm. you.